Hello, my name is Paul Amato, and I would like to speak with you today about abstract geometrical art. Geometrical abstraction is an art form that became popular in Europe during the first half of the 20th century. And it's associated with artists like Vasily Kandinsky, and Piet Mondrian. However, it's important to recognize that this art form really is universal. It appears, for example, in the art of many indigenous people. It appears in Native American art in many cases. And it's also very common in American quilts. So it really is a very universal form of art. What I would like to do today is give you a very brief demonstration of how to create uh, geometric abstract art. And it's a very simple example, but one that will get you started if you have never done it before. And I also would like to say that if you're unfamiliar with this art form, if you just go to your computer and type geometric abstraction into your search engine, you will discover many examples of this art form on your computer. Now let's start. So here I am sitting at my drawing table. I'm not a very good painter. I much prefer to draw. And so I usually begin with a sheet of blank paper. And I usually use either Bristol board or uh, some form of paper that's fairly uh, heavy, uh, like a marker paper, uh, some sort of paper that, won't absor that absorbs the ink well and doesn't smear. That's the main thing. I begin by using a pencil and a T-square to create a grid on the paper. And you can see what I've done here is to create a one inch margin around the paper. And then I fill in the middle with a grid of vertical and horizontal lines that create these little one inch squares. Uh, if you don't have a T-square, uh, a simple ruler works just as well. Once I have my grid laid out, the next step is to take an eraser and begin erasing some of the lines. So I might decide to start here and begin erasing. And what I wind up doing is creating a series of larger squares and rectangles that might be two, three, or four squares wide or long to break up the monotony of the grid. So I wind up with something that looks more like this. And here you see I've created uh, uh, some squares and some rectangles of different lengths. And then once I'm satisfied with the structure that I've given to this, I will take a marker and go over the lines to give me uh, a structure within which to, to work. The next step is to begin filling in the squares and the spaces with colors and patterns of various sorts. And to do that, I use a variety of different kinds of pens and pencils. I use some markers uh, that are very heavy, like these, uh, as well as markers that are more intermediate in size, and some markers that uh, are, are very fine. I also work with uh, colored pencils as well, with gel pens, which are nice for uh, putting lighter colors over darker colors. And I work with these paint pens as well, which use acrylic paint, refillable uh, acrylic paint cartridges. Anything that will get some color and some uh, texture into the larger design. So I begin to fill in the spaces in the grid with different colors. And I just keep going till they're pretty much all filled in, although I can leave some spaces white if I like, because white helps to break up the monotony. But eventually, if I keep doing this, I will wind up with something that looks like this. And I will keep, in, keep on filling in these uh, spaces with different colors and textures until I feel that it's finished, or until I'm happy with it, and I'm, I'm willing to, to stop at that point and say, okay, that's, that's good enough. I want to point out that this style of art is very simple to do. It doesn't require a great deal of technical skill. It doesn't require a lot of training in art. 
You don't have to be a master of brush technique. You don't have to be particularly good at drawing. And you don't have to master the art of blending colors with paint. It's really very democratic because anyone can do it. It requires no great skill. It just requires some interest and some motivation. So here we have an example of a larger finished product. This is a piece that I recently completed. And again, it just uses markers and colored pencils and gel pens to create this, this design. And you can see that it, how it was originally laid out on a grid, but uh, once I have uh, painted over some areas in black and filled it in, the grid elements fall away. And what's left is simply this interesting series of interlocking geometric shapes and patterns. This is a larger piece that follows the same principle. And you can see that, uh, again, it's laid out originally on a grid, but there's a lot of room in here for uh, variation and for um, trying out different textures and patterns and colors. And here's the piece that I'm working on at the moment. This piece is, is not yet finished. But you can see in this particular example, what I did was to take the lines of the grid, and instead of having everything vertical and horizontal, I allowed the lines to not be parallel to each other. So we have some lines that crisscross the page, which allows me to, to create other kinds of shapes like triangles, in addition to circles and squares. And again, I'm in the process now of filling this in to create a more uh, interesting composition. So you can see that this form of art, uh, at least the way that I do it, is very straightforward, uh, very simple. It doesn't require a lot of expertise or a lot of training. Anyone can do it. And for that reason, it's, it's, it's good for kids. I mean, children can do this uh, just as easily as adults. It's very democratic and it's a lot of fun. I like to do this while I'm listening to music. It's very relaxing. And if you simply have some paper, a ruler and some colored pencils or some pens, you can give it a try. Thanks for listening.